hold in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise. Amen. 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 Well, tonight, the title of the message is Great Expectations. <clears throat> God had a divine plan for the universe. And uh, before the foundation of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God, was sacrificed even before the world was created. So God foreknew everything. He had everything under control and he had a plan and it was a great plan and that's what i want to talk about today just the great plan that he had that he had from the beginning and that he sent christ uh, jesus christ to the earth to fulfill it and jesus perfectly fulfilled god's plan and now it's up to you and me Amen. uh we have great things and and great things uh to expect their great expectations uh, ahead of us. And, and we need to know about those things. You know, Hebrews 4 uh, verse 2 said that the good news or the gospel uh, was preached to the people of Israel just as it's being preached to us, but they didn't mix faith with it. And, and mm -hmm. what they came up with even though they heard the word of God, they didn't mix faith with it. And so they wound up in doubt and unbelief. Oh, goodness. And, and so what I want you to know today is this is a, a word of encouragement to all of us that, that we are not just mere human beings uh, walking on this mm -hmm. earth, uh, uh, fulfilling a mundane life, just going through the routine of uh of day-to-day -day activities that's not who you are you are a citizen of heaven mm -hmm. and uh, ephesians uh, 2 verse 6 says that uh, we have been raised together mm -hmm. uh, in christ Hallelujah. and seated at the right hand of the father but it's in christ so it's that phrase i want to focus on today in christ what does it mean we'll, we'll start with that concept uh in christ uh, and, and we need to know where we are because God has placed us in Christ. And, and would you see, I'm going to start with a couple of verses here. Uh, and then I ask Sherry to read these two verses, first one in Galatians. And so we'll start here. We're focusing to begin with mm -hmm. on the concept of in Christ. That's who we are. And that makes us different than the world. If we're in Christ, Christ, oh, hallelujah. He's the savior mm -hmm. of the world. Amen. He's the Lord of his kingdom. Uh, he's king of all kings. Amen. Uh, and that is that is exciting. And so well, what we want to see here from the beginning is that God has placed <laughs> us in Christ. So it's not just you by yourself walking around on the earth doing mundane tasks doing the same routine all day after mm. day, but you are in Christ. So Hallelujah. This. And this one is in the King James Version, Galatians 3, verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Okay, Hallelujah. let's just stop there for a minute. You've put on Christ. So that means you're in Christ. If, if you've been baptized, and I encourage all of you to be baptized, uh, what is baptism? Well, it's baptized into the water uh, because we were uh, crucified with him on the mm -hmm. cross. Uh, it's not like something he did out there a long time ago, but we, we were crucified with him and we've been buried with him in baptism. And so when we go down in the water uh, to be baptized uh, in the water, then that shows that our old man is dead. And then uh, we rise up, we are, we rise up in him mm -hmm. and we have newness of life. Mm -hmm. This yeah, is a, yeah. a message of encouragement today. And I, I hope that you'll all be encouraged by it. And you're in Christ if you've been baptized. Now, if you haven't been baptized, I encourage you to be baptized. It's a, it's a simple process. Uh, just be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And uh, you're, 
It shows that your sins are washed away and the old man is dead. And so when you, come up, when you come up from that, then you're alive, alive unto Christ. And, and you might say, well, I haven't done that yet, but that's not the only way you get in Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus said in John 6, verse 56, mm -hmm. if you eat my flesh and mm -hmm. drink my blood, my blood uh, you will abide in me. Ooh, and I will loose, abide in you. And I will abide in you. Okay, so mm -hmm. if we eat his flesh and drink his blood, but you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, you do it in communion. You eat his flesh and drink his blood in communion because Second uh, Corinthians 10 verse uh, 16 uh, says that if we to bless the cup of blessing, and we're talking about the blood of communion, or of course we would take it as wine or, or grape juice, but when we bless that, cup of blessings it's called a cup of blessing then we partake of his blood so how do we drink amen. his blood you drink it at communion amen. so amen. don't think communion is not important don't think that it is just some some ritual that you can uh it doesn't we matter do whether, Sunday you, mornings. whether you can uh, do it once a year or or once a lifetime no it's an important thing whenever you uh bless that cup of blessing in communion then you're actually partaking of his blood mm. and when you bless the bread Amen. That, uh, in communion you are partaking of his flesh mm, hallelujah. So jesus said if you uh eat of my flesh flesh and drink of my blood you will abide in me. You'll live in me. You'll be inside of me, and I'll be inside of you. So Hallelujah. Uh, if you haven't been baptized yet, you need to be baptized. If you haven't been taking communion, you need to be taking communion. If you're doing all of those things, see, that that just uh, uh, brings confidence to you that you are in Christ. Those are the ways, man. There may be other ways, too, but that, that's a good start right there. Be baptized. Mm -hmm. Uh, in water and also uh, partake of communion with the cup of blessing and the uh, bread and then you'll be partaking of his flesh and of his blood and you'll be in him now what does it mean if you're in him well Sherry's going to read a verse here in uh, Corinthians uh, read this verse please. first Corinthians 1 30 in the King James Version but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay, so if you're in him, if you're in Christ, you've been made unto wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Now, mm -hmm. what is redemption? We'll start there. By his blood, we are redeemed. Amen. That means Hallelujah. purchased back. And so... Sin, see, everybody uh, is born of the Adam nature. Mm -hmm. And so that sin nature is in every person. And so we're separated from God. And so uh, as we commit sins, when we come to an age of accountability, we have sinned. Uh, and so we're dead in our trespasses. But when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then uh, we are brought into newness of life. We, we're mm. born again. And when we're, when we're born again then, uh, and, and we're baptized in water, we partake of his communion, then we're in Christ Jesus. And so we have redemption by the blood of mm. Jesus. Hallelujah. So everything is purchased back and regained what you have lost uh, with redemption. That's what redemption is. It's regaining what was lost, what was stolen from you. And what is sanctification? Well, that's holy. You're made mm -hmm. holy. Mm -hmm. You're not made holy outside of Christ, but in Christ, you're holy. And you're also the righteousness of God. You know, 2 Corinthians uh, verse 5, verse 21, or chapter 5, verse 21 says that he was made to be sin 
He was made to be sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Here it comes again. Mm -hmm. Look at that phrase. In, in him. him, we are the righteousness of God. Now, what, what is righteousness? It means we're in right standing with him. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to stand out there and hold your head in shame uh, because you are in right standing with him. Not because of what you've done, but because of the blood of Jesus Amen. and what Amen. he has done in your life. The righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. Now, I, I'm covering some things here that are very fundamental and they're very, very important. You need to get your heart settled and established in these areas that you are in Christ Jesus. You are wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption mm -hmm. wisdom oh glory you might you might say well i, I lack wisdom I, I don't have much wisdom mm -hmm. you know james said if any man lack wisdom let him ask and god will give it to him liberally he, he's not going to to hold it against you if you don't have enough wisdom all you have to do is ask and he'll give you and, and really the only wisdom you have that's worth anything is the wisdom that is from above. Amen. Amen. And it is peaceable and it is easy to be entreated. So wisdom is very important. Wisdom, righteousness, that means right standing and holy. In Christ, you're holy. Mm -hmm. And you might say, well, I don't feel holy. Well, it's not, it has nothing to do with the way you feel. It has to do with what Jesus Christ mm. did. Mm. And let me ask you, did Jesus, is there anything lacking in what Jesus did? No, he perfectly executed God's plan. Perfectly mm -hmm. executed it. And so all we do is just receive what Jesus did He's for did. us. Mm -hmm. And that makes us in Christ. And by that, we are wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That. All of that's pretty exciting. Now, we're no longer mere humans walking on the earth, but we have, we've been purchased. Mm -hmm. We're no longer our own. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ bought us with a price of Amen. his blood. Amen. And he has seated us at the right hand of the Father. We're seated at the right hand of the Father. That's Ephesians. Uh, chapter 2, verse 6, we're seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. So I want you to, to get a picture of who you are in Christ. You're not a mere human being just going about and doing mundane, uh, lowly tasks Carmel on this earth. Tasks. But you are a citizen of heaven. You are seated at in the throne room mm. because you are a king and priest. We're mm. kings and priests unto our God. Kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm excited. I, I don't know if you're <laughs> receiving this message, but if you're receiving this message, I hope it will encourage you. Now, one of the things, I think there's three basic points that I want to make tonight, and we'll We'll see these in, in a moment, but you should have confidence and boldness, confidence and boldness because of who you are in Christ Jesus. It's not about your performance. It's not what you've done. Mm -hmm. It's not about anything like that. It's about who you are in Christ. If you are in Christ, and we've shown you how to be in Christ by uh, just simply partaking of communion, being baptized, and it, and now what happens if you're in Christ? Well, John 15, 7 says that if we are in Christ, we can ask anything. Ooh, hallelujah. If you abide in me, mm, we're in mm. Christ. If you're in me, and I my word's in you, so you, you study his word, you get his word inside of you, and you get in Christ. So if you are in Christ and your word is in him, ask what you will and it shall be done. Amen. There's Amen. no limitations. 
That's the point of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason I call it great expectations because yes. there are no limitations. No limitations on you or, or what you can do and or what you can do on this earth and who you are and your mm. influence. No limitations. That's the reason I call it great expectations. Amen. This is a message to encourage each of us to realize that we're walking in the newness of life, that mm. our sins have been forgiven and, and he has made us the righteousness of God. And we have wisdom. We have all wisdom. We have access to all wisdom. He has made us to be wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. What else do you need? Hey, right there it is. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And Ephesians 2.10 says that we are his workmanship. Oh. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You're a masterpiece. Hallelujah. You, you are a masterpiece. God made you a masterpiece. Uh, in Christ, he has given you works uh, that he has thought about from eternity, and he has good works. And those you, you do those good works in Christ. So this message is about being in Christ and the unlimited riches that are available to mm, each of hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. Oh, it's, I'm excited. Hallelujah. I'm, I've made myself excited just thinking about <laughs> these, uh, these verses today, being excited. Oh, hallelujah. And, and we, we have things to do. So we need to get busy. Yes, I mean. You know, don't just sit around and, and mope and uh, stay in a, an air uh, a place of depression and oppression uh, because you have things to do. I mean. You are in Christ. You're not in depression. You're in Christ. Woo, glory. I mean. you're, you're not in defeat. You're in Christ. Mm. You're, you're not in uh, failure. You're in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You're, you're not uh, uh, in poverty. Mm, you're, you're in Christ. Christ. You're not in sickness. You're in Christ. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's one verse that says, uh, how can uh, things that are unholy dwell with the things that are holy? Mm, mm, oh, and mm, how can mm. darkness dwell with light? Right, See, right. you are light. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You are, uh, you are important. And just as God was with Jesus Christ, he's with, with you. you. Amen. You, you think about it. You, you think about how Jesus walked on the earth <clears throat> and all of the things that he did while he was on the earth. He prayed and miracles happened. Mm -hmm. he, he spoke to the storm and the storm stopped. I mean, and and uh, boat went over to the other side of the of the sea. He said, we're going to go and they went. Yes, I mean. The storm couldn't stop them. Uh, he stood up. Okay, now God was with him. God was with Jesus. Uh, you know, it said, uh, uh, God said to, to Joshua, he said, as I was with Moses, Moses. I'm going to be with you. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure Moses, uh, Joshua was, was a little discouraged uh, when, after Moses died because Moses was a mighty man of God. And, uh, but God said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know, as God was with Jesus, Amen. When He walked on the earth, God is with you. Hallelujah! Because you are in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have great power and authority. You have all wisdom, uh, righteousness, sanctification, and, and redemption. redemption. I love that. Yeah. Because you're in Christ. Hallelujah. Well, you, how do you get in Christ? Well, just be baptized. Uh, take communion. Hallelujah! Share and I take communion every day. We want to stay in Christ. We don't want to get out of Christ. That's where we belong. Amen, We've amen. been seated uh, in heavenly places in Christ, and he has prepared works for us to do in Christ. Hallelujah. Those, those were prepared before the world was ever created. And so those are not things we don't have to make decisions about what am I going to do today? You don't have to make decisions. 
Well, is this the right place to go? Is that the right place to go? It's not about deciding what to do. It's about finding out what God has for you to do because you are mighty oh. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts talks about we live and live, live and have our being, being in Christ. Christ. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We let me say it again. We live, live and move and have our being in Christ. Christ. So don't get don't, don't think, well, uh yesterday I might have been in Christ, but today I, I'm not in Christ. No, no, no. We're in Christ. Mm. Stay in that. Mm. That's where you are. That's where you live. That's where you move. That's where you have your existence Amen. is in Christ Jesus. Now let's think about Romans 8:1. Uh if whoever is in christ okay mm -hmm. it says there is now no, no condemnation. condemnation oh hallelujah to those who are in christ who walk not according to the, the flesh, flesh but uh, by the spirit. spirit in the spirit and so there's no condemnation and you might say well i, I fell down yesterday or i I, I I I've sinned or I sin I did all of the evil stuff or I had evil thoughts yesterday. There's no condemnation to you. That don't be guilt ridden. Don't have Amen. don't walk under a cloud of guilt. There is no condemnation. God's not condemning you because you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Who walk not according to, to the flesh, flesh, but according to, to the, the spirit. spirit. Amen. Now, isn't that exciting? Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Doesn't matter what we did yesterday. If you sin, just ask for forgiveness and you will receive it. And walk on because there is no condemnation. Mm -hmm. No condemnation. You, you don't have to carry a burden of guilt because Jesus took it away. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the most Amen. important thing we can, Amen. we can ever hear in our life. Our sins, sins are, are forgiven. forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're not just mere human beings. There, you know, there's a lot of people out there and their sins haven't been forgiven. Why? Is God holding against them? No, and the blood's already washed it all away. But we have to receive we have to receive forgiveness. Uh, and otherwise, people are under condemnation. And they right. don't know that God's not condemning them because Jesus became sin mm, on the mm, cross mm. that we might become the, the righteousness, righteousness of God of God in him. In, in him. him. But there's a lot of people that don't know it. There's a lot of good Christians that don't even know this message that I'm telling you today. They're un under condemnation. They're guilt ridden because they've done things in the past that were not right, that were mm -hmm. evil, that were sin. But God is not holding our sin against us because Jesus became sin for us. Hallelujah. So if you've done anything wrong, if you've sinned, ask for forgiveness and he, he's quick to forgive you and if somebody's done something wrong to you you forgive them be quick be just like god and forgive people mm -hmm. for what they've done hallelujah hallelujah mm -hmm. i'm 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 excited about this message Amen. this message is something we all need to know and and, and to remember and, and see what is the point of this is to say there are great things in store for you but you have to put your faith with this what I'm telling you tonight, these are just simply the scriptures from the word of God, mm -hmm. and you need to mix your faith with them. It's one thing to just sit there and, and say, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good, but not do anything about it, not mix your faith with it. And you know what it is? If you hear the word of God and you don't mix your faith with mm -hmm. it, it's doubt and unbelief. Oh, so yes. I encourage you to believe what the scripture says, what I I have shown you tonight by the Holy Spirit. These are just simple verses that uh, they should be fundamental to all of us. And so that we would be established and rooted and grounded in the love of God. God has great love for you. He has great expectations 
uh, for you, and he wants you to have great expectations and and, and to call on him and bring Hallelujah. forth Hallelujah. great things. He has yes. great things for you mm. to do. Mm. This is a great plan. He has a great plan. He has brought forth a great plan, and he's bringing forth greatness in your life. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. I want Sherry to read a couple of passages in Ephesians chapter 3. And we'll start first with verses 9 and 12. And I'm going to ask her to read this. And, and I just want you to see the richness of what God has for you, who you are. You're, you're so precious to him. And he has done so much for you. He has so much he wants you to walk in. So unlimited, uh, the things that he has, the riches that he has for you are immeasurable oh my so much greater it's about understanding who you are in christ and what god wants to do for you in christ and through christ Amen. and so when we begin to realize that we are in christ and christ is in us then we let him out it's not just another typical day every day is a glorious day, day in the Lord. bringing Amen. forth the glory to the Father. So Amen. Ephesians Amen. chapter 3, verses verse, 9 through 12 in the Passion Translation. Just listen to the richness of this. My passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery. It was hidden for ages, past until now, and kept a secret in the heart of God, the creator of all. The purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders in the heavenly realm, God's full and diverse wisdom revealed through the church. This perfectly wise plan was destined from the, the eternal ages and fulfilled completely in our Lord Jesus Christ. So that now... We have boldness, ooh, hallelujah. We have boldness through him and free access as kings before the Father because of our complete confidence in Christ's faithfulness. Oh, hallelujah. That is amazing. It's just a few verses there, but it talks about we should have confidence and boldness. Amen. And access. To the throne of God, that, that we can come there as kings. I'm Hallelujah. Not, I'm not talking, we're not paupers. Uh, we're not beggars. We can come into his presence as kings. Mm. And he's going to mm. show us uh, the secrets and the mysteries and the riches of his glory and of his grace Hallelujah. and the goodness of his glory. He wants to show us all of those things. And you should have confidence and boldness yes. to come in his, into his presence as kings. You're a person of royalty. You have you have something that he wants. He wants you to come into his presence and commune with him and fellowship with him. And he wants to share things. He wants to tell you the things that he has prepared for you from the foundations of the world. This is such a richness uh, of this message today, that I want you to be encouraged. I want you to realize you should have confidence in who you are in Christ Jesus. And, and God, uh, you know, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he, he thinks uh, uh, more of you than you can possibly Amen. imagine. Amen. Amen. He has more for you than you can possibly imagine. It's all immeasurable. It's so much that God has for you. A and come boldly, come confidently. Hallelujah. Don't, you're not a beggar. You're, you're not a, a, a person of uh, that's in poverty and rags. No, you come you come before his presence as kings and let him reveal the riches that he has for you, the riches mm. that he has laid up from the foundation of the world and that he it's a mystery and he wants to show you these mysteries. Hallelujah. You're, you're not just a mere human being walking on this earth doing mundane tasks 
from uh, sun up to sundown. No, you are so much more. He so loved you that if you were the only person Amen. on the earth, Amen. he would still have sent Jesus to the cross for you. And when he, Hallelujah. when he sees you, he's going to do for you what he did for Jesus when he walked on Hallelujah. the earth. He doesn't see any difference. His love for you is like he loves Jesus. And his resources and all of his power is available to you just like it was available to Jesus when he walked on the earth. Hallelujah. Now, there's another passage uh, that, that Sherry, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Sherry to read, still in Ephesians chapter 3, and still out of the Passion Translation. It's so rich. I want you to get a hold of it. Realize you have confidence and boldness to come into his presence. Now, let's read this. This is verses 16 through 19 of chapter 3. And I pray that the Father, that he, the Father, would unveil within you, whew, hallelujah, the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength, whew, glory, floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Listen oh, to that. Well, that's you. Hallelujah. He's talking about you. You put Ooh. your name there. He, he wants I receive to, that. He wants hallelujah. To strengthen you with explosive power inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. Then by constantly using your faith. Oh, I said it's about faith. Yes. You've the life of faith. Christ will be released deep inside of you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. Hallelujah. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive is it endless love beyond measurement that transcends or goes beyond hallelujah any understanding this ex extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to the overflowing with the fullness of god Woo! That is powerful. It is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be filled to overflowing. And I believe that each one of you, you're you want to be filled to overflowing so that your family sees what's going on in you. Even your family in China, even your family that's not living with you, they will see that the love of God is is, is flowing out of you. Hallelujah. And they can come and taste of the Lord and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I come in, Joy and George, they're working with their, their family members in China. Uh, we we uh, told Brother Doug and Rita that in Oklahoma uh, this past weekend, we said, this is what they're doing. And and let me, t let me tell you something. When you're overflowing with the love of God, Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Then, then it's just going to flow out to everybody. It's going to flow out to your friends. It's going to flow out to the people in Walmart. It's going to flow out to the people in your workplace. It's going to flow out uh, all over the place. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That got me excited. <laughs> now, I'm going to end with this verse. It's still, it's the next one. It's Ephesians and I. 320 it says now unto him who is able to do to exceeding, exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think i ask or think that's right according to the uh his exceeding greatness of his power uh mm -hmm. towards us mm -hmm. it's working towards mm -hmm. us it, it's that exceeding greatness beyond greatness beyond yeah what's greatness. working in us well, hallelujah inside of you you have to, you need to realize that's where the immeasurable riches are they are in you they're not 
Uh, somewhere far, far away. They're in you. Yeah, the kingdom is within <laughs> you. Hallelujah. And, and it, it's immeasurable. And it, the vastness of its riches mm. is more than we can even ask or think. Mm. And it's all in, at work inside of you. And we have to be strengthened with the power of the Holy Spirit to even comprehend what God has done for us and through us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It's immeasurable. It's beyond what we might ask or think. And, and the love that he shows, he talks about extravagant love, mm -hmm. uh, never ending love, Hallelujah. extravagant love. Yeah. It's beyond what the natural mind can understand. And it's only by the uh, Holy Spirit that we can even come close to understanding his love and the richness of his love and all that he is bestowing upon you. He's oh, bestowing yeah. it upon you. He's giving you favor. He's giving you blessings and, Amen. and, Amen. and honor. And, and, and this is a glorious time. This is the favorable year of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Hallelujah. And I pray that you go away encouraged with this message tonight. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. You know, the title of the message, again, is Great Expectations. And I'm, I'm going to just, just ask you this question. You know, what are you expecting uh, the Lord to do for you? What are you expecting the Lord to do in your finances? What are you expecting the Lord to do uh, in your family, in your, in your workplace? Uh, what, are you, what are you expecting of him? And, but we can expect great things from God. God is great. Greater is he that is within you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. And so you've got that great one living in you and you can have great expectations every single day. God is going to do this for me. God is going to, to be with me. Uh, he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. I know that I can see all of my family saved. I can see all of my family moving and serving the Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.